Looks like we are live. So great to see everybody. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me on this Wednesday. We made it to an yet another week. So that is a wonderful accomplishment, especially these days. Mr. John Diekman, how are you? Good to see you, my friend. How's everything? Wendy, how are you, Wendy? Great to see you. So we have we have a small group so far today, but that's okay because it's not the size that matters. At least that's how I feel. So I'm so glad you all are here, and so that is so great. So yeah, we're at part seven and which is really cool mr john payne how you going how's it going oh i'm so glad so you're feeling better uh wendy that's good to hear so i'm so glad you're feeling better that makes me feel good so that is great and so john is here from upstate new york john payne uh we have mr diekman from wisconsin we have wendy from texas and as my Spanish friends say, quejas. So that's pretty cool. So basically, we're up to... Hey, Mr. Roy, good to see you. How are you, sir? Always a pleasure. Mr. Roy is all the way from New Jersey. And we have Alexis Ortega. How are you? It's great to see you. So glad you're here. Alexis, I think you won something uh, a couple of weeks ago at Steve Leahy's live stream. I think, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, if you did win, congratulations on that. Alexis, where are you from? Uh, I'm so sorry if I forgot. I, if you tell me enough, I'll remember. Hey there, Mr. Nameless Subscriber, how are you? Hey, how you doing? How's everything? Unity is strength. So glad to see you. Kerwain, that is a great name. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for that. And it's always an honor when you guys just come by on a Wednesday. I know you could be doing other things, watching, you know, some really good content and you decide to hang out with me. So Kerwain, thank you for that. Brad, how's it going? How are you today? So, Kawain, uh, where are you from, my friend? And Nameless, once again, where are you from? I think you said either California or or uh, somewhere in the in the Southwest. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so let's see. So I'm so I don't know where exactly where Nameless is from, and also uh, Unity is strength. I don't know where exactly you are you are from jm so cool where is that jm and then uh oh nameless is in california hey what's up there tone great to see you raul you're from jersey you're a jersey boy like me me you and roy are the jersey boys so far so that is cool. So, Kerwain is in FLA. So cool that you're there. I lived in Florida for eight years, and uh, that was great. I loved the uh, Christmas shopping in my shorts. You know, that was fun. <laughs> and Mr. Roy spent a short uh, uh, time in Florida as well. We both were outside of Florida, outside of Orlando. But when I went down there and I came back, that's when Roy went down there and he came back. So we just missed each other in the uh, Florida world. So that's pretty, pretty funny. So, so it's so cool to see you, Tone. Tone's doing some incredible work out there in, uh, in Queens, right? Uh, so that is exciting. So we're, all the time I was calling her Maria. Her name is Malia. Malia Creeling. So that was not good. Uh, oh, so Quain says he hasn't painted in a while, but he keeps, I, oh, I keep inspiring him to get back. Yes, little things. Just go ahead and just, just take out a sketchbook and just, just do some doodles. It'll build on it, you know, just take your time. Don't rush yourself, right? And thank you, Quain, for that. 
and that makes me feel good oh how cool so alexis is in sedona arizona beautiful country out there holy cow really nice that's fantastic and uh yes rick says uh rick good to see you happy happy wednesday and you were from montreal canada if i'm not mistaken and brad is from manitoba canada manitoba i got a, my jersey accent my new york accent comes out all the time now i'm not sure if it's jersey or new york because I spent most of my schooling in New York City, but I lived in Jersey only like five miles away. So I think I'm more of a New York accent than a Jersey accent, right? So what are you going to do, right? And so that's cool. Now let's get the Extreme Patriot Arrow. Dun, dun, dun. This is uh, what's really great about the Extreme Patriot Arrow is I sold out of these three times. I'm waiting for a new shipment of parts. So if uh, anyone wants an airbrush that is going to kick the butt of the Iwatas out there for, you know, one third of the price, give me a shout out. Okay. And I'd be love, I'd love to uh, tell you all about this airbrush and the detail that we can. Oh, British Columbia, my apologies. So, so what part of British Columbia, near Vancouver? Hey, you hear that? I said that without an accent. I said Vancouver, not the way us New Yorkers say Vancouver. You know, I didn't do that. So I'm working on it. Oh, great. That would be fantastic. Yeah, this detail airbrush, 149, will knock the other airbrushes out of the park. Wayne and uh, so the thing is is the quality assurance I make sure that I check this airbrush out for three hours before I send it out to you one two three four the thing is with me if this airbrush that I send out is not good enough for me to do my artwork it's not good enough for you guys so I make sure that it's 100% one two three four 100 uh, percent you know not not passing but passing with flying colors it has to do everything that i ask an airbrush to do and as you can see i ask these airbrushes to do a lot so guys look what i do on my spare time i do a little geometry and trigonometry so that's that's how weird i am so all right so let's see who else we have here victoria brad's favorite city so that is great okay so i put the detail mixture in here and so we're just going to get acquainted with the painting if i haven't paint so i don't paint on this except when we're in class right so so what i'm doing is saving all the work so when you guys and girls see it you're seeing every every aspect I'm gonna start doing the pillow a little bit just a little bit and let's see and let's come down here And this detail mixture is great. It's like sketching with a pencil. It really is. It really is fantastic. And so what I'm working on now, my friends, are the big, the big shapes, right? That's what we're working on. Big shapes, not small shapes. Big shapes that are important. And... Oh, so... Uh, Kuwain says, so many holidays coming up, going to order so I can get it in time. Definitely, uh, you know, do some really great gifts and stuff like that, portrait gifts. So that's fantastic. So definitely. So I have my PSI set at 25. Let me make sure my... So it's so funny, you know, sometimes I forget I turned off my airbrush and then as I'm airbrushing, the, the pressure gets lower and lower. And at first, 
Uh, oh, at first I think that, okay, I'm getting really good control. Then the, the PSI gets lower and lower. I'm like, I turned my airbrush compressor off. So I turned that back on. So now we're back in business. Yeah, the inks are really great. Whenever you order the inks, uh, Kawain, I always send you extra. So, and then an extra gift as well. So if ever you want, you just let me know. Um, so here's where you get everything, you know, whenever you're ready. Mr. David, how are you? Great to see you. David in the house. And Dave, you are from New York, and now you're living in Nevada, Las Vegas. Did I get that right? This is how I care about you guys. I want, you know, I get it wrong, but I want to know you guys, you know? And you guys are not just somebody out there. I, I really want to get to know you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my email, ad, my uh, website address. There you go. Just go ahead and type on inkplingers.com and you'll find everything when you're ready. No pressure sales here, right? So, and Nameless says, you know you have a good compressor when you can't even tell it's off until the pressure starts to drop. So true. Yeah, no air leaks, right, my friend? So, so very true. I had it off since last night. I don't think I used it this morning. And hey, Brad, thank you, my friend, for the super sticker. This, that is so great. You guys, you know, I just want to thank you. Uh, thank you, Brad, uh, for being a great student of mine. He's my most tenured student going on two and a half years in my mentorship program. And it's just wonderful to work with him. Brad has been growing exponentially and you should see his work and what i like to do with my my students is not to make clones of myself but to amplify who they are as artists right i show them all the things they need to do great art but most importantly to amplify who they are as artists because if you ask me that's the most important thing, is who you are as an artist. And to a good teacher, tries to bring that out. Not just, uh, David, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it. It's so important. And I really appreciate, uh, David, your, your uh, support and encouragement it means the world to me thank you brad thank you david you guys are great uh that is so amazing so thank you guys um it means a lot and it makes me a lot very much encouraged that you know ink flingers will go on and financially we'll be able to continue having the very best equipment for live streaming out there and uh, so I have great plans for this, uh, for this channel. And, you know, but knowing that I have the support of you all, that really makes me feel amazing. So thank you, everybody. So if you ever want to, uh, ah, David, thank you so much, David, with two super stickers. Thank you, my friend. I really, really, really appreciate that. Thank you. And so, uh, you know, my mentorship program, I had my mentorship program for quite a while now, several years. And I'm getting pretty good at this online teaching. And so if you ever want to take your airbrush control to the next level, right? And that's when you work with me one-on-one -on -one and we work with the inks and we work online and we find a schedule that is good for me and for you working around your work schedule uh jesus is one of my newer students and i work around his work schedule and he you know works around where i could help him and and my schedule so it's not like you have to be there at a certain time and 
And that is important, you know. It's important to have that because in this day and age, everyone has to work. Everyone has responsibilities, family, things that are super, super important. And how is that going to fit in into the classes? So, so I'm really happy that I'm able to do that. And if nothing else, if you take my mentorship program, you're painting at least once a week with me. And that's great. And there's a group class that's in, in, included. And you're able to email me if you're working on personal projects and I could help you out. I always answer you guys, so definitely think about it, you know. I really need about four more students to get over the hump so I don't have financial issues. So if anyone is thinking, I I take care of you with open arms, okay? And once again, David, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you, Mr. Brad. And Brad says, Tim classes are a true bargain. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate that. I give you guys and girls who are my students 110%. Your art is a, hey, there you are. Hey, Zeus, great to see you. So, hey, Zeus is one of my students. I'm so excited to have him. So, that is so great. So, thank you, hey, Zeus, for being, uh, you know, Taking my mentorship classes uh, means everything to me that that you guys are so in and uh, you know and the great work you're doing. It really is a pleasure. I always say that you guys learn. I learn as much from you guys as you guys learn from me because you have such great ideas. Thank you, Alexis. Alexis says, "Hit that like button. I appreciate it." So the good thing is the channel, I want you all to know, the channel is actually uh, three, three subscribers away from 8,900 8, subscribers. So that means we're only, no, I'm sorry, 3,900 3, subscribers. So that means we're a little more than 100 away from 4,000. Not a big deal for other channels. They get 4,000 in a day. But a big deal for this channel because every subscriber is important. So that is so exciting. Hey, Marshall, good to see you. How are you, sir? Marshall, where are you from? Now, Mr. Jesus is coming from Georgia, which is a great state. And uh, uh, thank you. Jesus says I'm a great teacher. I appreciate it. You're a great student, my friend. That's for sure. So let me get my glasses on. And we're just going to continue working on her pillow a little bit. Let's make that happen. Again, with the detail mixture, I'm coming in darker in a little bit. But we're in no rush, right? Where's the rush? Never a rush when it comes to artwork. Even if you have, if you have a commission, there shouldn't be a rush. Don't fall into that trap. Uh, if you are in a rush, then you just took on a deadline and just let your, your client know it's going to be a little bit longer. But never rush. It's never a good thing. Wow, Hawaii. Very cool. Nice. So what's the weather like in Hawaii today, Mr. Marshall? Enzo, how you doing? Yes, I'm in Jersey, my friend. You as well? So Enzo, good to see you. I've seen Enzo several times at uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Leahy's live streams. So that's cool. <laughs> that's funny, Jesus. And ah, uh, Union, New Jersey, not far, my friend, not far at all. Just outside of, not too far from Newark, right? that area I know I know Union pretty well I got some friends out there very cool so Enzo's a neighbor so great and nameless says Tim that's not right 8,000 subscribers and only a handful of viewers on your live streams 
You know, uh, actually only 4,000. I thought it was 8,000, my friend. I got overzealous. But my live streams are great because I consider this like a, a very uh, exclusive club, right? That's how I look at it. So, you know, the smaller the better, actually. So only those who, you know, really appreciate, you know, working, seeing me work on a portrait, great conversation. You know, this is not, this is definitely not a class for the masses, right? This is, you know, a very refined classical group. So I'm very happy. I, I don't, I would love it to be bigger and to help more people. But I'm okay with small, definitely. Uh, oh, that's right. So, yeah, me and Jesus were talking. Definitely, you know, we have to slow it down. We got plenty of time, right, Jesus? And, oh, so Marshall says it's getting ready to rain here shortly, but it's nice. Getting ready to start airbrushing. Oh, how great. So, Enzo, do you... Uh, so, Marshall, do you uh, have a regular job during the day? Is airbrushing your your main, or is it a side side hustle? Hey, Sue says my niece is on board with the classes. Oh, that would be great, hey, Zeus. Oh man, that would be amazing. Let your niece know. That it would be an honor and, uh, you know, a niece of yours, I'll definitely take care of them and make sure we, we really, uh, I give them the carte blanche, you know, the red carpet, so to speak. Uh, Brad says not everyone can handle the best quality. He's mentioning about the live streams. I appreciate that. Anytime, Jesus, anytime. And I definitely appreciate that. And we'll just continue this up here. So you see how I'm just sort of very slowly working on those and I'll get darker. So it's so important to go dark. Uh, Nameless says, just don't forget those who were here from the beginning. If you ever make it big and have to start starving, I would never charge for subscriptions. Only if I was homeless. <laughs> then I might, but no, I mean... As long as I'm good, you guys are good, you know? Hey, Blue, how you doing? Great to see you. No worries about being late. You're on time. When you're here, that's on time, Blue, so that's cool. Uh, and Mr. Todd, how are you? Hailing all the way from San Diego, California. So that is exciting. So that is so cool. Thank you so much for coming and uh, so I appreciate that Mr. Todd and so that is fantastic honey is from Long Island Long Island New York fellow New Yorker and Blue says you haven't missed anything yet <laughs> might be that way from the very beginning to the end right you know I try to do my best but it's true you probably didn't miss much. No, you missed because a lot of great conversation here and hanging out. So, it's all good in the hood. It's all good in the hood. Okay, so. So, someone says, hi, Lewis. Where is Lewis? I don't see you, Lewis. Uh-oh, maybe I missed somebody. If, Lewis, I don't see you, uh, but... Um, Hi, Lewis. I appreciate you're here if I don't see you. Oh, Lewis Marshall. Cool. Lemonade. Actually, it's this um, low-calorie lemonade. Five calories. This taste is the best. The fit and active, but it's hard to find. I don't know why. Anything I like is hard to find. Lemonade, um, you know, uh, what else is hard to find? Lemonade uh, that I like. Uh, certain art supplies are hard to find. Women, 
You know, a lot of things I like are hard to find, at least for me. <laughs> oh, boy, I crack myself up. So let's see. We have some stuff going on on this side here. Just slowly establish this, right? We have plenty of time. No rush at all. And, you know, with this, these, these folds, we don't have to do much. We just have to give a hint of them there because this is really not about the folds of the sheets. So we just do a hint of them and that would be enough, actually. So we just take our time and relax and have fun. Patty, great to see you all the way from Illinois. And we have Andre from uh, Belo Horizonte in uh, Brazil, right? Belo Horizonte. So that is fantastic. Como vai você? So great. So we have such a great variety of different places. Colette, right out of... Uh, Wisconsin. So we have several Wisconsin people here, which is fantastic. Yes, definitely, Andre. I, I want to remember where everybody is from because, you know, I want everyone to know that you're all important, you know, and you're not just here like, oh, that's just another person back there. No, I really want to get to know everybody. So that is cool. Not that my memory is always going to serve me, but I'll ask if I don't. Just forgive me, everybody, if I ever forget where you are one week, you know? So just just concentrating on, uh, you know, bringing this together. There's no rush. Just like in our classes when we work on a project together, there's no rush to finish it. We take our time and we'll get there, you know? Ah, uh, thank you so much. I'm doing okay. I appreciate that. Total bane. Total bane, Andre. So that is cool. When I lived in Orlando back in the 90s, I worked as a camera salesman. Uh, we sold professional camera equipment to tourists in Orlando. And right around January, February, we had a lot of uh, Brazilian tourists, and that's where I learned a little bit of a uh, little bit of of Portuguese. So that was really great. And so the Portuguese people are Brazilian people are so cool. They really are a lot of fun, very colorful, and you know, great to work with. Definitely great customers. So I really enjoyed that. One of my favorite parts of living in Florida was to get to know all the Brazilian people. So that was really cool. And uh, ah, cool, very cool. And Jesus says I refer to Andre as Andre El Gigante. How cool is that? Oh, no problem, Andre. So, uh, you know, this is... New languages are always difficult, right? Definitely. But that's the great thing about art. It, it trans... Trans... It transpires or goes past uh, language, which is great. Supersedes it or... Uh, goes beyond languages it's a language that is like universal right jesus says his portuguese is low that's funny i remember celia cruz those who are hispanic out there she used to always say Celia Cruz, uh, Cruz was the great, um, she was a fantastic uh, Cuban singer, uh, salsa, I believe, 
and her English was not so good and she say I am so sorry that my English is not so good looking <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> that was fun the way she said that and let's see we'll just continue and Ah, hey, uh, Jesus says the portrait's coming along well. I'll be watching Andre's live feeds. Don't know when he he's saying, but I'm there to watch him paint. Oh, great! So, so that's fantastic. So, Andre, when are your live feeds? Cellular Cruise was amazing, wasn't she? Asuka, right? And she was great. Old school salsa, right? Big fan of Celia Cruz is Mark Anthony, and you can see that he was influenced by her. So many artists were influenced by Celia Cruz, which is really cool. So I agree with that, Blue, definitely. So that's interesting. Very, very cool. And we're just going to continue working on here. So let's make sure that we don't get too fixated in one area but at least make a good dent in an area that we're working one second rule is very important when it comes to both folds and faces and stuff like that we'll come over here Distance is everything. Distance is going to tell us when we need to, uh, when we have to go darker or lighter. Distance is going to get us where we have to go. And we need like sharp lines. We need to go in there. Uh, we need to worry about distance. Distance is also going to control your your gradations right so all those different things and that's what you learn in my mentorship program about distance and the crucial quality of reduction and distance and all of that which is really amazing ah andre fantastic also uh, so andre says hugs to all my friends abraza a todos amigos de america un dia quiero Conocer voces. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I have to go. I have to uh, find your live stream. So Jesus will tell me when the live stream is for you. And I'll make sure I post it on Inklingers. We have to support each other. Right? So that's crucial. So definitely. Definitely I have to tell everyone about your live stream, Andre. I want you to succeed, my friend. Definitely. If you succeed, I succeed. And you see, we're just creating some context as far as where she is, right? So even though I'm doing like, you know, some larger areas, I'm still going in and doing some of the detail, you know, as far as the values. And you see how my distance, how I'm pulling back on the trigger is pretty much the same, but the difference is the distance. You see my distance changes. And that's how you get the different values are the distance. My PSI stays the same. That doesn't change. But the distance, that's the key, right? The distance is everything. And once you learn viscosity and distance, then you're unstoppable. Then you can pretty much paint anything. And you have that control of the airbrush that is second to nobody to nobody and I mean that and that's that's what we have to do and let's see oh definitely so that's fantastic Jesus says he's gonna give me that information and uh, and 
And uh, Andre, Andre, I believe, is an ink flinger. So I think he's also on ink flingers, which is good. So we can look him up there as well and on Facebook. And so that's fantastic. So that's great. Yes, I'm glad everyone's showing some love to Andre. That's amazing. It's such a great group, really. It doesn't matter how many are here. It's the quality of the people that matters. Definitely. A little darker over here. Just getting some of the variations of values. And if I want a gradation, you see I just increase my distance. That's all I have to do is increase my distance. Yeah, there's fun areas and there's areas that are not so fun to paint. But what's important is, is that, you know, we don't cut corners, right? We give attention to the areas. We might not have that area be like the most important area, but we have to give it attention and do the one second rule and make sure that we don't pull any punches. Never dial it in, right? Always give it 100%. Always look and say okay i'm going to so let's zoom in and you can see what i'm i'm doing here it's over by her thumb so we'll just come up there we go and let's darken this just a tad okay so here we are working on the fabric here little creases See how I go in and get, if I want a fine line, I just go closer. Make sure I don't get any spidering. If you do get spidering, it's not the end of the world. Just have to be careful, that's all. And then we have the light underneath. And we have this one second rule. It's going to save the day. It's going to keep you in the game, right? Keep your head about you and stay in the game. So important, everybody. Can't stress how important that one second rule really is. And, of course, we have this really soft edge here. And this comes up. And these pencil lines will go away eventually. But right now, like training wheels, you want to keep your... You want to definitely don't remove your training wheels until you're ready and have total balance with your painting. There we go. So you see, and as we zoom out, so that's how I, you know, you can see how I'm just working on that fabric. So, you know, it's a lot of tedious stuff, so I'm not going to go too far into it with you guys watching. That's something I'll do off camera, right? That's definitely something I can do uh, later. So let's go ahead and see how we could uh, work on her face. So let's do that. And let's see what I missed. Uh, do do do. Andre Garfia, yes, that's exactly it. Very cool. So that's that's good. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and continue working here. And so we're gonna start working in the face a little bit here in her face, Malia, not Maria. I've been calling her Maria. Not so good. So definitely found that out last week and I'm like uh oh sorry about that Malia you're amazing and just bring this over this dark and let's shape the light a little bit still working in the, in the detail mixture right because the great thing is we can always go darker but let's work light for a while okay 
That's going to help us. And you see all the detail that's in the so-called shadow area. There's a lot of detail and variation, and that's what we're working on. See that right here in, in her eye socket here. Even though we're in a detail mixture, we can do a lot with this just to do some subtle changes. Now the trick is not to oversaturate, right? That's the real trick. So make sure there's no oversaturation. You know, hit it in the area and then move on. You can always come back. But if you make it too, if you make oversaturate it, the paper will get too wet and it will cause you problems. So we don't want that. Now if I'm going to do some detail like in her nose here in her nostril, I'm going to come real up close, right? And come and make sure. So we're going to kind of, we're going to, I keep saying gonna, we're going to go ahead and we are going to work on this eyebrow and it's fine to generalize in the beginning but since we're so far along we're going to start to uh, start refining the shapes right it's the generalizations are good in the beginning but not as you go further it's time to work from the large to the small from the general to the specific right it's so important and so definitely um, let's make sure that we take care of that. Again, I'm just going to work on the shapes here and make sure I get the angles right and everything like that. Now, here's, here's a very good consideration. Yes, you do have control. We have control with the airbrush. But when we're kind of looking where to aim, it's more than okay to do that with the with the pencil every one of us are better with the pencil than we are with the airbrush why do i say that because we had pencils in our hands far before we were uh, ever working with an airbrush right so that's definitely the case so just gonna come over here So now we're just going to, since we did the pencil lines, now I have a real good gauge on where to, where to spray, right? And I'm in my detail mixture. When I say the one second rule, here's an important consideration. When I say one second, you look for a second, then airbrush, but never airbrush and then look for a second because then you're spraying and not looking. So always look first and then airbrush. So look for a second, then airbrush for a second. Look for a second, then airbrush for a second. But never spray when you're looking at your reference because then that's a sure way of making a mistake. So you see how I'm able to come in here and get a little more specific with my shapes and really start seeing some of the, the micro variations of light as it's hitting her forehead here and same thing down here we're going to get our aggressive eraser but the thing is with the aggressive eraser we have to learn how not to be aggressive with it so pretend when you're using your eraser that you're actually applying this on the model's face so you don't want to be too harsh on her face right you want to you want to be gentle and so think of it that way and you won't be too harsh so as gentle as you would be on Malia's face is how gentle I want you to go ahead and apply that in this late stage of the game right in this late stage of the painting so you see how gentle we are and there's these really light micro variations of value and that's what we want to get and that's going to really transform our artwork to that next level. So I see here there's a slight, um, there's a dark here. And it's kind of hard edged. 
but it's not very dark in value. So I'm just going to put this here and I'm going to spray from about four inches. And you see that now I'm getting that a little bit of a hard edge, which I wanted. And let's do that one more time, about four inches away. And now I got a little bit of a hard edge there. And we're just going to keep going very slowly. And let's see. Um, Nameless says, we were all drawing with a pencil before we could read or write. So true, my friend. So true. I was drawing with a pencil when I was like three years old is the earliest recollection of me drawing. But it usually was with like a red pen that one of my brothers and sisters who were much older than me, they were already in school. So I would grab their red pen and start drawing on everything on their textbooks and I was one of those little brothers. Drew on everything. Didn't matter. I would draw on it. So that has dried. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very, very lightly just shake this a little bit. Setting up for the white pastel, right? Sort of plowing the field, so to speak. And so if I zoom out, you can see what's happening. I'm getting a little more specific in here. It's really very beautiful when we work it out like that. You know, it's, uh, it gets very subtle. And subtlety is really, really not a commodity in art these days. So you always want to keep things subtle if you can. Same thing with photography. You know, learning how to be subtle with the lights is so important. It really is. And so we have this transition tone here, but we have this sort of terminator type of shape. So let's shape that terminator here. And as we do that, hopefully we'll get more of the character of the model, right? So let's see how we can do this. Yeah, now I can see her character starting to reveal it herself. There we go. And now I feel like I'm starting to get somewhere with that aspect of her personality. And then it's a little darker over here. So now you're starting to see all those little variations in the shadows. It's not just shadows and light. It's so much more complex than that. If you take my mentorship class, I actually go into the geometry, the trigonometry, um, the study of light. And those are things that, you know, if you take my class, we'll go over that. And you'll get information you won't get anywhere else. Because with airbrush, I'm breaking it down into its most simple. And getting it down to like mathematical equations of what helps somebody to get uh, to get control of the airbrush. Control of the airbrush is like flying a plane. There's no secret and there's no talent. But the thing is, you have to be able to explain it. And there is so, there's so much to airbrushing, but if you find out that there's an easier way to explain it, it's really, it really makes a big difference. Oh, so uh, Nameless says, we were all drawing okay. And Marshall says, yes, we were. And Jesus says, nice trick. Most of the time, hard edges messes you up. Oh, you're doing great with the hard edges with our class together. I saw how fantastic that is. Uh, thank you so much, Blue. Great to see you. Thanks so much. And don't work too hard, okay? So that's cool. So that was nice to see Blue. So thanks for coming by. And we'll just continue this over here. And let's see, do we come in with the white pastel a little bit? Why not, right? Why not? So when I'm looking for something, invariably it's underneath something, right? 
or behind something. So I did find my sandpaper. So what I do is I take a piece of uh, like maybe 80 grit sandpaper and oh Patty, have a great night. Always a pleasure. Take care. Hey Paul, how you doing? I didn't see you got here. How's everything? Paul, you're in Indiana, am I correct or am I incorrect? But you know, if I am incorrect enough times, eventually I'll totally memorize it. So let me know if you're from Indiana, if I'm correct. Let's see. Dun dun dun. How many people think Tim's wrong? Five people? Ten people? Let's see. So the consensus, Paul is from, drum roll, where's Paul from? Let's see. Paul is from, he has not, he has not, uh, wow, Paul, you are Indiana. Wow. So give me a little shout out, okay? See, that's what I do. I get it wrong enough times that eventually I memorize it, Paul. So great to see you, my friend. Go. So are you uh, near Fort Wayne or Indianapolis? I have no idea about Indiana, but everyone knows those cities. Let's see. So we're coming in with the white pastel. And we're doing these micro value changes. See, in the beginning, we can do these, uh, you know, these really, you know, strong changes from lights and darks. But when you get to this stage, you got to do those real micro changes. And we have to stick with the game, right? We can't. We can't dial it in, so we have to really work on this. But why, okay, so here's the thing. Tim says, Tim may will say, Tim, well, why don't you go in with airbrush? You're an airbrush artist, right? Why don't you go in with airbrush? The thing is, I'm working in fine art paper, right? And I'm a pastel painter, and that's why, plus... You know, people who work in Yupo paper, stuff like that, you can't use pastel. It won't work. But since we're using the color line paper by Canson or the the uh, Canford cardstock by De La Rowney, we can go ahead and use pastel. Advantage A is that there are no blue shift. Advantage B, I could, a, I could continue airbrushing over it then putting white pastel, airbrushing over it, and there's no blue shift. So, you know, it's a win-win situation. The real question is, since I'm working on paper, why would I not, right? I mean, pastel and airbrush go together. They're like sister, sister mediums. They really are. They really go together quite well. So the question is, do you use paper that's going to limit you and have to worry about blue shift and worrying about Createx paint and everything like that? So that's why when you're doing a black and white portrait, this is the most fine art way of doing it. And Jesus says he likes the paper we're using. Yes, that's the color line paper by Canson, my friend. And that's really great. Oh, Wendy, have a great night. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're feeling better. And thank you, and I really appreciate you, uh, your encouragement always. So one of these days, we got to meet up, Wendy, uh, and we got to do a, a, a class session together. I want to go over some of the new techniques that I've been doing, and, uh, you know, that would be great. So let me know one day we can meet up, okay? I hope you're still there, Wendy. So how cool. So Paul is from Indiana. That's neat. Just outside of Fort Wayne. Do you ever get to go to any Notre Dame games? See the Fighting Irish? In my family in college football, you were a fine art you were a Fighting Irish fan. You had no choice. 
you were a Notre Dame Fighting Irish football fan or you were in big trouble. So that's what I am. That's part of the entrapments of being an Irish American. And you see how we're doing all these little micro, micro changes. Even in here, there's a micro change. So we're just gonna, going to do some light values in here. And uh, Mr. Marshall says, so when you combine airbrush and pastel, I'm sure you're airbrushing first and layering the pastel on top. Yes, definitely. And what I also do is I also will plow the field a little bit. So I'll make sure there's not too much uh, uh, airbrush on there, too much ink. And I'll just erase a little bit and get rid of excess ink before I come in. So it's really cool. So it's something I got down to a science now. And let's see. And Marshall says, how do I seal? So I get that question a lot. Great question. And the thing is, uh, you know, since I am a signature member of the Pastel Society of America and I'm a very established pastel painter, uh, my pastel, I mean, my art teacher, Harvey Dinnerstein, he always said to always just put it under glass with a mat and never use any kind of fixative or clear coat over it. And it's protected with the mat and it'll stay fresh for, so far, hundreds of years, there's been no problems once you put it under glass and frame it. So, but the, the advantage of not doing any kind of clear coat or anything like that is that it stays true to what you did. Uh, when you go ahead and clear coat something like this, you're going to change the texture and invariably you're going to darken the picture. I want the same decisions that I made today be in the painting a hundred years from now. So that's why I'll never fix it. And then when you use any kind of fixative or clear coat, unless it's like you have to be really careful about the uh, archival qualities of it. How is it going to last over time? I know that seems like a weird, uh, but it's important. You want your artwork to last, right? You want it to be here forever. Oh, that's what I'm here for. And if you have any questions, always email me, Marshall, or send me, email me, send me IMs. I'll always answer you. Maybe not right away, but I always get back to you. And Paul says, Tim, I live in Notre Dame. <laughs> not really, but go to the bookstore there a lot. Oh, how cool. So do they, uh, I love that Rudy story, right? Wasn't that great about the guy from Indiana, the... Uh, the little guy who was on a practice practice squad and he finally got to play even though it was only a couple of plays it was just a, a great story so much tradition right Notre Dame right that's the great thing about it so much tradition and and Nayla says how does one become a member of the Pastel Society of America so basically it, there's several tiers. The first tier is to become an associate member. And I think that is like, you can, anyone can become an associate member, but then become like an artist member. I think you have to have uh, several pieces, like three pieces in the show, in one of their uh, annual shows. And then after that, you're eligible to have your work juried by the board of the Pastel Society of America. So they look at maybe six or seven pieces of your artwork and then you get juried in. So I was juried in way back in 2006 and that was a great honor. So, so yeah, there's more and more Pastel Society members now, but there wasn't as many back in the day. It's a great honor and you get to put a signature on your pastel paintings so that's cool yeah it was a great movie jesus definitely definitely and so you see i'm just very slowly what i'm really doing is is really modeling the light right just making that light feel like the light that was on her when she was in the studio whenever this photo was taken 
And that's what we want to do. We want to kind of recreate that whole scene where she was, when that photographer was there and, and the lighting and what kind of lighting it was and what she was wearing, all that. You want to kind of repeat that. I know that seems like really in depth, but that's what we're doing. We're kind of recreating a moment in time if you really think about it, right? That's exactly what we're doing recreating that one specific moment in time and so now I'm just going to just darken this area just a tiny bit right there and this just a little dark right there and that's how I'm creating her expression right that's what we want to do recreate her expression so there's so much that goes into painting a portrait but it's not like unattainable with practice and the right instruction, you'll be doing amazing portraits in no time. And so you see there's a lot of anatomy going in to her expression. And there's a lot of micro changes in the light that goes into her expression. So that's what we're really working on. And thank you. I appreciate that, Marshall. Thank you. And it is an honor, uh, Nameless, definitely. Uh, I haven't exhibited there in a while, but since I'm getting back into pastels, I may uh, enter a pastel painting in there uh, this year. So they have a show, I think, every June. or No, actually, you, the show, the deadline's in June, and the show is usually in September. Hopefully, COVID will go down, so I won't be so nervous to go to a gallery. Because at those gallery shows, they are like packed to the gills, so many people. So you see, I, what I have to do is I have to make sure when something comes up, like her, her forehead, I believe like a little vein there, when that lifts up, that means something next to it has to go down. So that's what we have to always remember if you have something going up right next to it, you have to have something going down. So what does that mean to us? So when there is a highlight that comes there, there needs to be a dark right next to it. And that's, that's a, a general rule. It's not a constant. There are a lot of exceptions to that. But that's a rule to always look for, right? Always are to look for that rule. And you see, I'm, I'm actually going in here and working out this little ridge of light. So remember, wherever is facing light most directly is going to get the white. So think about that, that it rhymes. Whatever is facing the light most directly is going to get the white. And so that's what we're doing. All these areas are facing the light much more directly and that's why it's getting more light. And in our case, that's why it's getting more of the white pastel. So that's like one of my timisms. I gotta write these things down, you know? Is there any similar society for airbrush artists or other mediums? There are, there are, there's a, there's a, there's a um, oil painter society, pastel paint, uh, portrait painter society. There are watercolor societies, just about any color pencil societies, but we don't have anything for airbrush just yet. That might be cool to try and do. Um, and so that's something to think about. So I think there's far more variety of subject matter when it comes to, let's say, working in airbrush than, than other mediums, right? Uh, your, your watercolor painters are mostly figures in landscapes and still lives. Same thing with pastels. But an airbrush, I mean, which is cool, there's far more variety. People are doing uh, surfboards and cars and murals. And so there is a great variety in airbrush, which I love. Plus, airbrush people are a little more down to earth than other other areas of art, which I like that. Um, and so, yeah, definitely. So uh, that's something we all should put our mind together and think about maybe creating 
an airbrush society. That's how the pastel society started. There's uh, right now there's a pastel society of New Mexico, of New Jersey. Uh, there's one called the Degas Pastel Society in New Orleans. So we should start doing something like that, and it would bring more attention to our airbrushing as a fine art form, and that's not a bad thing. That would be a great thing. So yes, so we have some micro changes of light in here. And so if I come closer, you'll see more of what I mean. I don't want to get hung up in here, but I can definitely see that this this is very, very uh, soft edge, these transitions here. So we just want to get them just like so. And they seem like nothing's really happening, but there is a lot happening here. And again, I'm just going to put very light pressure here. And there's indirect light going on over here. So what I mean by indirect light, it's bouncing off of something else. But it's still coming from the main source. And it's arriving and hitting the under part of her nostrils. It's very interesting. Light is fascinating, everybody. It really is. And we have some soft edges going on here. And then... Over here, it's not so not so defined. So let's go ahead and create sort of that kind of nondescript kind of wispy light that's going on here, right? And let's pull that down just a little bit so then we could come down just like this here. And we see there's a lot of light coming in here, right? It's not so cut and dry. Here's our shadow. Here's our, here's our light. It's so much more complex than that. In the beginning, you'll see we're just going to go ahead and try and get those large, uh, large groups of light and dark. But as we get more refined and towards the middle and the, the end of the painting, we definitely want to uh, get even more specific and, you know, subtle if we have to. Because we want to, you don't want your painting to be rough. You want it to be as subtle as your subject. And that takes time and takes patience and it takes a lot of, a lot of observation, right? So make sure that we spend that time and, and, uh, try and find out exactly what the light is doing with all of this. Okay, so now we have some some light over here, as you can see, coming over here like this. Let me see what I'm missing here. Ah, uh, Marshall, have a great night, and thanks so much for coming by. I hope to see you next week, my friend. If you have any airbrush questions, always feel free to uh, IM me or, or paintedglyphs at gmail.com and I'll be glad to uh, talk airbrushing with you. Jesus says, Tim be telling me something is happening and changing even when we don't think it is. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. And wow, we only have five people here. So it's a very quiet live stream. I think I didn't put it in any groups. I didn't advertise uh, so much. But I'm happy when it's a smaller group sometimes. You know, it's, it's nicer. And let's go over here. There we go. And I'll just come over here like this. Okay, now we just have to keep our head in the game, right? It's so important to keep our head in the game with this. Micro changes. And over here we have this indirect light coming over here. 
Notice I'm not calling it reflected light, everybody. You're only going to hear indirect light from me. And that's why my live streams are really revolutionary, because you're going to learn things in a way that this painting thing is going to, this painting activity is going to make sense to you. That I promise you. That definitely I promise. Sam, how you doing? Thank you so much. Your latest painting of that Jaguar is absolutely amazing. That is so great, my friend. And, uh, oh, is it 11? Okay, so right, you might see 11. So sometimes there's a delay. So right now we have five, but hopefully that will go up. Uh, thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. Uh, the Nameless Society of American Airbrush. <laughs> I love it. That sounds fantastic. So that's cool. So there's indirect light here. And I call it indirect light because um, most likely, unless this is a, this of course is a studio piece, meaning a studio photo. So they have, those of you who know about studio photography, there's usually a more, almost always more than one light source, but it's a, it's a quiet secondary light source that really doesn't overpower the key light. So it doesn't look totally alien, right? So that's something that, you know, you, when you're doing photos, when you're painting from a photo, that's not your photo, not your photography. You have to pretty much decode what the uh, photographer was doing, what they were using. And so if you ever want to know what the photographer is doing, let me show you because this is wild, okay? You're going to like this. It's a little different. So here we are, have the picture of Malia. So beautiful, right? So if we want to find out what happened sort of like the scene of the crime. So think of when the photographer was uh, the moment that he shot this particular picture among many others. Think about how am I gonna find out, you know, what kind of lighting that the photographer used. And many times the biggest clues are in the catch light. So if you look here, there are two lights, not just one light. So you see right here is one light, and if you really look, you can tell that this light on top is more powerful than the one on the bottom. You can't tell so much here because everything's in shadow, but here you can definitely tell that, and it's okay, so what's happening? So now that you know that, let's, let's look even deeper and figure out if we can get a little more clues as to what kind of lighting they used and why. Why would they use two light sources? Well, the first thing is, is that uh, he wanted to light her from behind, from underneath as well, so the shadows weren't so super harsh. Even though those shadows do look dark, there still is some detail in here, and so you can still see that if there wasn't that second little smaller light, you would get totally black here and and also notice that a lot of people call if they don't have that second light coming from below a lot of people will say your model has raccoon eyes so that's why he had that light from below because although it's slightly darker here it is not as dark as it normally would be if he didn't have that second light from below lighting up this area lighting up underneath her nose and here. So if the lights were too harsh, it wouldn't be a very flattering light. Yes, it would be, it would be dramatic, but it would not be flattering. And when you're photographing women, you want to flatter them. You do not want to make them look more dramatic. When you're photog photographing men, maybe you would like that. But also older men, you might not want to have dramatic lighting. So you might want to do something like this, maybe have a reflector over to the side so you can light this up a little bit. A lot of different things. Um, so that's so important. Um, so I hope that helps because 
if you're painting from the photograph and you didn't take a photo, you have to almost be like a light detective to really figure out what's happening so you can make sense out of the scene. So keep that in mind, everybody. And I think that would help a lot. So I see here that this light right here is a little harsh. And so I'm going to soften this light a little bit. So I'm just going to do circular motions right on the edge here. And I'm just going to start with a super light pressure. And then I'm going to soften that pressure. So what we're doing is we're making sure when we're doing a, a painting of a woman is that we don't want to make her look harsh. So you're going to kind of calm that down. And you can see how that softens her up a little bit. And then the same thing here, we can come in and kind of soften this up a little bit and it makes a big difference and that's what we want to do we want to make sure that we don't p create a painting where she's like oh you made me look older or you made me look tired you don't want those are bad things when you're taking a photograph or if you're doing a painting so if you have a good photographer he's going to do things that doesn't make her look too harsh and i think this photographer who i don't know did it. So that's why I'm getting into photography more and more because I want to be in charge of what the emotions I want to get from the pose. So let's see. Um, and Jesus says, yes, we have a name for a society. And that's cool. Sam uh, says, thanks, man. And uh, the feed has been buffing. Not sure if it's on your side. We're doing okay here, so let me see. Yeah, we're fine, but it might be on your side, my friend. So hopefully it'll get better. And is anyone else having any kind of uh, buffering issues or anything like that? Nameless says it will be an online society community with sole purpose of growing the Everest community. There's a lot of online community out there, but sometimes big things have a humble beginning, of course. Don't despise the day of small beginnings, the Bible says, and I believe that, you know? All great things start out, start out small. Small in stature, but not in character. So that is so true. Again, just make sure that we get rid of any of the harshness in here. And it's just such an important consideration that we make sure that the values are not further away than they are in the photo, right? So if I'm looking at the reference, I can see that this value is too far away from this value here. So what does that mean for Tim? That means I have to lighten that value, right? And if I lighten that value, I'm going to be more in line with my reference. And that's what we want to do. But when we're making these changes, be mindful of the one second rule and that you don't go ahead and uh, not pay attention to what we're doing, right? We have to pay attention. That's, that's the life's blood of this, is uh, really, really uh, observing. So that's cool. Thanks, uh, Sam. I appreciate that. And and Brad says, all good with the connection here. So cool. Uh, yes, what are you working on, Mr. Todd? Always loving your work. And isn't it Wendy or someone who builds websites? Maybe she'll volunteer. Wendy does build websites, I think. Um, but yeah, that's a great idea to, uh, you know, that group. There we go, just working on that eye. And again, so what we do on one eye, we have to work on the other eye, right guys? And let's see, so we're gonna blow up. The, the beauty of working with a DSLR is I can blow her eye up. And let's go over here and let's start darkening just a tad. Just a tad. A little darker on the ends here.
And again, this detail mixture goes a long way. So I have to change the oil on my compressor. I have a silent air, so I'll be purchasing some oil and changing that oil this week. Because I have it a year now, so I should have changed it a while ago. Okay, so now we can take our Fonz and Porter and let's do this highlight right here. And we have a little dot right there. And let's bring this over. Have a little thing going on right here has a lot of little specular highlights and when you have specular highlights most likely it was a beauty dish that they used and specular highlights are a beauty dish you'll see in fashion photography but usually you'll see that in very young women because it shows off everything now the specular highlights could also be with a softbox but what they did was they use a reflector that had, let's say, a silver reflector, and that would cause specular highlights as well. When painting, when photographing women, you rarely want to use specular highlights unless that they're really super young and their skin is amazing. Now, Malia's skin is definitely amazing, so she was able to pull that off, but get in trouble as a photographer uh, creating too much, too many specular highlights, that's for sure. I'm learning. I'm definitely not a uh, definitely not an authority on portrait photography, but I am learning and pushing myself to learn. And I'll tell you, it's really it's really important. It's an important endeavor when it comes to being a portrait painter. It's very very important. And you can see that we are getting some amazing character. It's starting to look like Malia a lot. And that comes from really observing and not caring when the painting is going to be done, going, going to be done, not caring about that. It'll be done when it's done, right? That's how we got to look at it. I know with live streams, we're anxious to get to the next project, but it's so important to show you how to make a successful painting from beginning to end. It really is. Let's see what I missed. Uh, so 4008 Restorer, when that was the last time you gave them a deep clean. Oh, so, so what exactly is a deep clean? Let's see. Uh, Oh, you mean the, uh, the silent air compressor? Oh, the eraser. So Jesus wants to know uh, about the eraser. Uh, the micron, yes. So the micron, where is that? Uh, so if I'm looking for the micron, invariably it's underneath something or behind something. So right now I'm just looking underneath and behind, or I might have, oh, here it is. So the Micron, Z, the, uh, it's the Mono Zero. This is the best thing since sliced bread. Highly recommend it. It's really great for getting in there. Now what I'm using now is my, my paper stump with, with the white pastel. Yes, definitely. Uh, the inks are great, Jesus, right? Because it teaches us what viscosity is best to flow through the airbrush. And that's, that's what I really love about the ink. So even if I do work with Create Text or something in the future, I'll know just how much that has to be diluted to actually be effective through the airbrush. And that's, that's so crucial. There we 
go. And let's see. Okay, again, we want to go ahead and get those little micro adjustments here, even though it's still in shadow. It's not a shadow without variation. There are variations within that shadow, and we want to make sure we pay attention to them. And what's really great is as you get further and further down the line and you start working in this, eventually there's something called surface texture that you achieve when you get to a certain level of a painting. Whether it's uh, working in airbrush, pastels, oil, acrylic, there's something called desired surface texture. We're almost there where the, the, the paper takes on a different texture than is inherent. That, you know, doing the layers, it becomes something totally different. Might look like porcelain, might look like uh, working on canvas or something like that, which is really great. As you can see, just these little changes are creating. Now, right here, if I look at this, this is way too... Uh, Too much of a contrast here so I'm just gonna kill that a little bit same thing here too much of a contrast and calm that down so as you can see you make those changes when you have to because if you don't uh, you'll lose the the character of the pose so as you can see when I first went from being blown up and seeing just the detail when I came out, I was like, wow, that's way too, way too contrasty. So I had to calm down those darks. But it's not always the case. Sometimes you have to calm down the lights. You know, you have to make that decision. So when you see it, you say, do I get rid of the lights or do I get rid of the, the darks? Or, you know, bring them more into balance. See, the whole thing is balance, right? That's what we want. We want balance. There we go. And calm this down here but paying attention to it, right? Not just calming it down, but paying attention to, you know, the, the balance, right? Making sure that there's not too much of a contrast, right? You wanna get those values right on the money as how they relate to one another. It's so important, and if we don't do that, and that's why you see me moving around a lot, because if we don't get that balance, it's just going to hurt us. It's going to hurt the painting, and it's going to hurt the character of the model. And even doing the lips, as you can see, as I'm painting those lips, we're getting that kind of transparent glow as we do it slower and slower, right? Not jumping in. And same thing here, we have a little bit of a transparency of light in the upper left. Let's zoom in and see how that looks. So let's see. So what am I missing here? Uh, Todd says, if was working on my portrait with the inks, I wouldn't mess with the brushes. Oh, okay. So that's cool. And yes, I find them so much easier to work with the inks and, and create text. So that's cool. And here Todd says, uh, oh, you have 15 airbrushes. That's amazing. That's really good. Tone says he has about that many, but use four daily and one of those you favor. So what's your favorite airbrush of all time, my friend? Mr. Uh, for Todd and for, for Tone. Slightly lighter here. So we're definitely going to make those micro adjustments here in value. And what we're doing, we're setting up for those specular highlights, right? And we all know what those specular highlights, those are the highlights that have definite shapes that almost 
almost like a mirror. That's a specular highlight. So the more I get into photography, the more I'm learning about light and what it does and what it doesn't do and how to manipulate it and how to actually describe it with the airbrush. So it's so important. Okay, no time like the present. Let's go in with the uh, specular lights here. So we'll just come right here. Hey, if it doesn't work out, we can always erase and go over it. So nothing ventured, nothing gained, they say. So let me zoom in so I can see a little bit better. We'll bring this over. Then we have this kind of big shape coming over here. Very abstract, right? But the thing is, you want to get the direction, right? The direction is so important. Just as important as the shape is the direction of the specular highlights. And like I said, you can always erase, so it's no big deal. Now, some of these lights are more powerful than others. And, but the thing is, when you're doing this, make sure that you keep things organic. Make sure that they're not the same size, right? So that's crucial. Make sure they're not the same size. And you can erase it, right? And you can shape it a little better. Just like so. We got a couple of stragglers here, right there. Right here is a straggler light. And then we can come in with the white pastel and the stump to get some of this translucency here. And come down over here like that. And kind of liking it, kind of liking it. Now what you can do is if you want to get like a really thin line in between, you take your, your eraser here and then you sharpen it. Look how, how small this eraser is getting. Oh my goodness. So you, you take one of your aggressive erasers and then what you do is you take a blade and you're going to cut it like a chisel, right? Like at a 45 degree angle. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a super fine line. Just on one side, right? So let's take a look. Okay, so you see we have this chisel here. Watch how we use this we can come in and get like a super super thin line just like that and we can maybe move this in just like so and and then we can say okay overdid it and then we can come back in like this come out and sort of get that that whole feeling of what we want to do so now if i zoom out let's see how it looks because now we're stuck in the details but that looks pretty good and you know we can come in with the airbrush and we can do some of those uh, little dark lines in between right let's see like right here Right, see that? And that gives it a little more. Just like so. Just a little darker here. 
because everything is either casting a shadow or reflecting the light. And for right now, I think I'm pretty happy with that. But let's make some of this, uh, some of this translucent light that's in the lips, right? The lips have this translucent light. So let's make sure we put some of that in there. See that? Give it sort of that transparency. To a certain extent, light goes through the lips, right? Light, and you can see the blood because the thin is the skin is so thin, so that's why we see stuff like that. And then over here, this is super soft edge, so let's calm this down, right? Got to calm down this hard edge. Although I want to see that hard edge, it's not there, so I have to chill and soften that up. Now that's not softening up as much as I wanted to, so maybe I could bring in the eraser and erase this out a little bit. There we go. Again, you know, these little changes here and there go a long way to getting to you where you want to go. Uh, Tim, all he waters except yours. I do like gravity feeds. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. So thank you, Todd. So so I'm glad I'm the only Naniwata you have, so that's good to hear. I'm in an exclusive club. And those who have Iwatas, everyone, you're going to have a real pleasant surprise when you, when you get my Extreme Patriot Arrow that's customized, because I give it quality assurance that no airbrush company will ever do. I mean, I really go crazy with it. I mean, that's why it takes a little bit, because I make sure I test everything. I test the air valve. I test the, the uh, spring. I test everything. So when that leaves my studio and it's on the way to you, that thing is humming perfectly. And right out of the box, it will work perfectly. Now, if something ever happens in shipping, I'm not in control of that. I will take care of you personally. So... You know, we meet with a Zoom call. Well, I don't use Zoom, but you know that kind of thing. And so that would really help a lot. So look at, at how we're getting that translucency and how... So now we have to work on this side of the face. So if we zoom out, we should be pretty happy with, you know, how everything's going with the lips and everything. Let's see. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. I feel we're getting somewhere, so that is good. Of course, I'm always going to, you know, resolve things. There are a couple of specular highlights on the right, on the eye on the right, so let's go ahead and work on that. So it's interesting. When we're doing this, it's sort of like when you get further along in the painting, the decisions are a little more, uh, you know, moving around and uh, working on some of these micro areas. But that's only in this late stage. So it's good that you're watching this because there's a time for everything. There's a time to do general and there's a time to do specifics. And this is the specifics time. So uh, that's so important. And it's great that you're here because you can see how I work on a painting uh, during the more uh, advanced stages of the work. Now that when I went over that just a little bit, so why don't I just use my airbrush and go over this a little bit here. There we go. And I could use my stump and just pull out a little bit more. There's more of a space here. Bring this over. There we go. I like that much better. And you see here these these um, eyelashes. I'm kind of putting things that aren't there. 
that's why the one second rule is so important it keeps your head in the game and keeps you from putting like I'm thinking yeah there should be eyelashes there so my mind plays tricks on me and says okay I'm gonna put in some eyelashes where in the picture there are no eyelashes whatsoever so we always have to watch out for that and um, let me see what else we have here uh, Tone says now he uses the bottom feed eclipses. Very cool. Heard good things about that, have to say. So I didn't hear too many bad things about that. That's all I have to say about that. You know? I mean, honestly, that's good stuff, Tone. So Tone knows he works like... How many hours you work a day in airbrushing, sir? A lot of hours, right? So, you know, what Tone has to say about airbrushes has a lot of weight. Again, we're just going to specular highlights. Learn photography, and you'll learn how to paint photography. So, you know, that's that's my reasoning. If I'm going to be painting from photographs, I better know how they're made. And I want to make my own. I want to pose the model. I want to have an idea in my head. And But this is something I did for many years before I got into airbrushing I always pose the model and COVID-19 of course kind of killed that for a while but I'm going to be going back to that I have some models coming hopefully this month so I'll be doing in uh, in my little photo studio which will be great looking forward to that let's zoom out and see how that looks Oh, yeah, look how those eyes are coming out, right? You're really starting to get that expression of her. And we'll just lighten this by changing the um, shutter speed on the camera. And as you can see, uh, things are looking pretty good. And let's intensify some of those lights here. And so as we're working... We spent a lot of time over there. Let's move down to her, her neck and her chest. So let's go ahead and do that a little bit. And recently, uh, at least eight hours a day. Wow, that's amazing. Sometimes 12 or more. But think of the control you're getting with that, you know, of, of airbrushing that long. That's, that's amazing, my friend. I'm going to go ahead and put more power here because remember what's facing the light gets most of the white so we got to make sure but we don't do this until the end right this is the end game I say we're probably two weeks away from finishing it but this is still considered the end game like in chess right it's the end game and of course you want to see these little micro changes here in her neck you know, it's not just light and shade. There's details in all of this, right? There's a lot going on. You you want to be you want to be aware of what's happening in the photo, right? You definitely want to be aware. And so with that, you'll see the anatomy. You'll see the indirect light. You'll see the strength of the light here. You'll see the soft focuses of the lens. All those different things. And I know that's not something that uh, people talk about in the art world is about the photography of it but you know what take my mentorship class and you're going to find out a lot and your artwork is just going to explode now remember it's a mentorship class it's once it's uh you know once a week and there's a group class that um, i'm coming up with and so that's where you grow you grow over a period of time not in a short burst of energy of a workshop in four days. You grow when you work with someone over a course of time that we can uh, talk about different concepts and, you know, think about it. You can only eat so much food at one time, am I right? So if you're, uh, it's Thanksgiving, I always so upset because Thanksgiving there's so much food 
but I can't eat it all. There's only so much I can eat, and I get full, and it's like, oh, what a waste, all this good food, you know? And being single and living by myself, I don't have many feasts, which is good. Otherwise, I'd be, I'd be huge. So, but still, you know, when Thanksgiving comes, I wish I had more of an appetite, but there's only so much I can take in. And I think where my live streams shine is that you're not, you're not really trying to take everything on at one time. You're just, you're just working with me and learning over, over a long period of time. My artists, my students who have been with me for a year, two years, six months, just what they've done and where they are now compared when we first started working together. It's just such a pleasure to see. It really is. Here's another specular highlight. Remember, we have regular lights and then we have specular highlights when you see there in her eyes. So I noticed right here on her lip here. But you have to set up for those specular highlights, right? So I'm just going to darken right around that with my detail mixture. Just like that. We're going to let that dry. We're going to just blow some air over that. Hey, John, how you doing? Great to see you. Thank you so much for that, my friend. And thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate it. So that's cool to see. Cool to see you, John. So, John, where are you from? I mean, where are you uh, living right now? I always ask the, my visitors, you know, where you're from. So... I want to remember. I want to remember you. I want to know you guys. So it's not just look at me, watch me. It's about you all as well. See how this little bit of a tilt down here. All these little micro changes really just make a huge difference. All right, from Cali, stuck in Texas. How cool. So I believe we have uh, Wendy's from Texas. So I think we have at least two Texas people here. So what part of California are you from, my friend? And John, I've seen your artwork. Great stuff. Okay, specular highlight. Ah, Huntington Beach. Isn't that right by L.A., if I'm not mistaken? So that's Orange County, yes. The O.C. Now, that was a show, wasn't it? Uh, very cool, my friend. Very, very cool. And so I'm glad you're here. This is a weird live stream. Not many people are here. Um, so that's interesting. Usually I have like 20 to 30 people in the room, but really now it's only about seven. So not sure what's happening, but you know, we got to go with it. You know, the people here are supposed to be here, John. That's how I look at it. So I don't say, oh, wow, this is horrible. I only have seven people here. No, it's important to really thank the people who are here and to just give you guys kudos and thank you for hanging out, you know? Like I always say, you all could be doing something else, but you decide to spend time on my live stream, and I really appreciate it. And, uh, and that's really, you know, very sincere how much I appreciate you guys for taking time out of your busy week. You all have responsibilities and things you can do, sleep that you could catch up on, but you decide to hang out with me, and that is great. And yes, exactly, the most important one, Sam. Thank you. And uh, Rick says, at least the best looking ones are here. That's what I'm talking about. You know, the A-list. We're the A-listers, aren't we, uh, Mr. Rick and Sam, right? So the A-lists are here. So <laughs> that's our story. We're sticking with it, right? And look at that. We're at 1119. So, okay. So there wasn't a lot of people here. 
but the live stream went fast. When the live stream goes fast, in my opinion, that means it's a great live stream. It's a fantastic live stream. So, you know what? The people who he were here were meant to be here. It was positive. It was fun. It was informative. I mean, it went so smoothly, and I'm just so happy, you know? And so it's 11.20, so I go and I give everybody the full... So here's my whole thing about the live stream. I make sure with the live stream that I do the full two hours. I had, you know, side effects from the COVID-19 boost, and I was still like, uh, you know? But it's important that I give you that. And it's also important, everybody, that I don't do anything off camera except little things like folds or something. But I try to uh, show you all the whole process from beginning to end. So it's important. And I also leave it on there. So if one day you can't make it or several days, several weeks you can't make it, you can always catch it uh, later, which is really great. So I appreciate that so much. And Nameless says, only the cool crowd got the invitations. <laughs> I think you're right. I think only the cool guys got the invitation this month, this week. But thank you, everybody, for hanging. I really appreciate it. So I lost a lot of people. I can tell a lot of people kind of snuck out. But that's cool. You know, sometimes midweek, you know, people see it as half empty and suppose it's half full, right? So it's like half the week is done, but other people are like, oh, another half to go, right? And that's cool. I get it. So you see how I'm, I'm working on some of these lights inside the lights area, which is so important. Total pain. John Payne says she looks amazing. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Trying, you know, and I'm going slow. And that's important, right? You know? Progress is, you know, getting to the point where you're happy with it. And it has nothing to do with time. Although one say that time has affected everything, but not with airbrushing, hopefully. So let's move back down here and we'll work on her neck here. Again, micro adjustments, right? Now, now is when we are really getting into the tight detail of everything. So we're working on micro adjustments. Am I running out of ink? Yes, I am. Look at that. At the end of the live stream, Tim runs out of ink. Isn't that funny? John says, the ones that took off had to crash for work. I'm really glad I caught this. Thank you, my friend. That's true. That happens for a lot of people. You know, it's 11 o'clock in the East Coast. And a lot of people are like, I got to bail. You know, and I understand. I'm just glad everyone just stops by, including yourself, John. Thank you. And thank you for commenting and telling me where you are. And uh, that is great. Really love that. Thank you. I'm just going to. So even though there's only seven minutes left, I don't dial it in at any point. So I am going to reload my airbrush and we're going to go back in. The last seven minutes, the last five minutes, unless I have to go to the bathroom. You guys are getting the full, the full Monty. Uh, so Nameless says she looks like the next, looks like your next girlfriend. Wow, that's cool. Hey man, from your lips to God's ears, I hope she, someone as beautiful as this inside and out is your next girlfriend, sir. So I pray that. You're a good guy, Nameless, so of course, that's very possible. So I don't see anything anything outrageous about that at all. Let's see. And we'll just come down here, see how we can even stuff out. So I have a class tomorrow at 9 a.m., so when I close this up I usually will do an aggressive wind down so I gotta I have to clean my airbrush and get something to eat and then go to bed try to get up early so I have some time to work on commissions and stuff before my classes tomorrow 
So if you haven't taken my class, anyone out there, whether you're seeing it on the live stream or you're seeing it, definitely go to inkflingers.com or instant message me. I'll be glad to talk about the class and whether it's right for you. And uh, Nameless says she, uh, oh, okay, cool. So Nameless gives a thumbs up. That's very cool. 11.25, we're doing good. And so you see how we are working on her neck. And so it looks like we haven't done much today, but you can see how more refined she's starting to look. And, and that's what we're doing, these micro changes that are going to make a big difference in the long run. So you see me pumping that trigger as I'm working. I'm pumping that trigger, and this way I'm getting a skin texture. No need for skin texture stencils when you have this technique of pumping the trigger and varying your distance, right? Then you're gonna get the look of skin. So there's more than one way to, you know, to get to Rome. There's a lot of roads there. Skin textures are great, not saying anything bad about it. That's a great way of doing it, you know, but I like this because it's just the way I do it. Brad says she's looking great. Thanks for another live stream. Thank you so much for the super sticker, my friend. And thank you, David, for that. I really appreciate you guys. You know, I uh, that is so fantastic. So thank you. And... Uh, Everything, everything is so important and, you know, all your encouragement, everyone just coming to my live stream is a great encouragement and hanging out. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe because I have live streams and I do do some, uh, you know, short tutorial regular videos and uh, it's really great. I do have give giveaways every now and then. So definitely, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, and it'll be great to uh, see you every week. And if you want to be on the mailing list, just say you want to be on the mailing list, put your email in the comments, and I'll go ahead, put you on the mailing list, and I'll alert you if there's any new great values out there with my customized Micron or any sales on my inks or something. You'll be the first to know and you won't miss it. So that's cool. So take care, Brad. Always a pleasure, my friend. And Tone says, how many hours do I paint in a day? So I teach Brad, I mean Tone, and so I would say, you know, probably with the teaching, probably about four or five hours a day. And then I teach different subjects. So that causes, a, you know, I might teach pastel, so that takes me away from the airbrush. Maybe one class I'm teaching digital. But that's the thing with my mentorship. I teach everything that's going to help you with the art. And Sam says, we really appreciate your effort, talent, and faithfulness, Tim. Ah, oh, thanks so much, Sam. I really appreciate you. And I hope you have a good night. And I'm really honored you came to hang out with me today. We hang out with us. So great work you're doing. And thanks for inspiring me with that wonderful... Uh, Jaguar that you did so great man that was so nice to see so nice to see his work really loved it and thanks for posting it on ink flingers which is great ooh the 11.28 we're still going I give you the full the full time so let's see so you can see, it looks like we didn't do anything, but there's a lot of softness here, and there's a lot of these uh, beautiful uh, details in in the so-called shadows. And so that's what we're really, uh, really capturing here. And let's extend this out. The lips don't have a border on the right side, sort of. That sort of blends right in with the shadow because there's like an interesting cast shadow going on like i said the photographer is using two separate lights causing some really interesting special effects but look at this just this little dark underneath her her mouth there underneath her lip wow did that really bring out a character in her really brought out so don't worry about likeness 
because likeness comes when everything falls into place and everything does not fall into place until the end remember that so don't worry if it doesn't look like her it will trust me you just have to stick with the program you don't taste the cookies you know when it says put it in for 30 minutes for 350 you don't take it out in 10 minutes and say wow these don't taste very good you just got to follow the recipe and the recipe is you know what I teach in my my uh, mentorship program which is really cool okay so it is 1130 everybody thank you so much for hanging out with me you guys and girls are amazing if you're catching this on the live stream afterwards I just want to say uh, enjoy thank you for watching it all the way through and hit the like button and subscribe and I hope to see everyone next week Take care.